So, well, thank you for the very kind introduction and what an absolute delight it is to be back in uh, what I consider to be my American home, Seattle. Um, really great. Well, Redmond, you know, it's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I know. I, I, There's a provocation. Um, so you've got the sound. Perfect. So, you know, um, the, your, uh, the wonderful co-hosts were talking about, you know, the, 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 some of the orchestras I've had the privilege of working with and so on. But the really great luck in my life and the really great privilege of my life is that I've been able to share with a lot of people uh, something I'm truly passionate about. And I think that's the most fortunate thing that can happen to anyone. So that's roughly what I'm going to be talking to you about. And I don't want to give you any answers today. I'm not here to tell you that this is what's wrong and this is how you're going to do it right. I'm just going to blow some thought bubbles in your head and see if, uh, see if you agree or not. I think one of the great things that distinguishes us as human beings, as a species, is that when we have feelings, um, every wonderful range of feelings we can have. And to put it as a very simple example, if we're angry, for example, a monkey might throw a rock at another monkey. A dog might bite the dog or growl. Um, we, at least some of us as humans, most of us, I, I believe in the wonderfulness of humanity, we can write a book or a poem. We can say, that was unjust. I'm going to become president and, and fix it. Uh, we, can, <laughs> we can say, you know, the roads in Russia are really bad. I'm going to become an engineer and fix them. Anything like that. Or I can write a symphony or I can do this, you know. That's our, one of the greatest achievements of, as humanity and I think we can really be proud of that. Um, so the title of my uh, little talk today is What Music Can Do For You and What You Can Do For Music. Um, and those are two quite different things and very important. To start with, I'm going to do a little audience participation uh, here. And I have what I consider to be the greatest piece of music ever written, um, uh, which is Jan Sibelius's Fifth Symphony. It's close between five and six. Um, Sibelius was a Finnish composer. Um, you can Google him. I'm not going to go into his biographical details. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to play you a one minute, roughly 60, 70 second excerpt of music in 20 second chunks. And after each chunk, I want you to shout out what you thought that was about, or even more importantly, what you felt. Was it menacing? Was it building up? Was it frightening? Was it elated in love? Was it kissing between two uh, you know, lovers? Was it uh, fighting? Um, was it war? Whatever, whatever you feel, just shout out. Feel free. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a signal when I, st when I stop it. So it's three or four chunks like this. Um, so here's chunk number one. Do, do, do pay attention because it's interesting. Okay, thoughts, what did you feel? Okay, 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 so hands up, hands up. Um, I'm going to do the back there. Right, okay, yeah, bearded man. I was expecting menacing. Duh. Okay, chunk number two. So we had, we had, uh, what did we had? We had, sorry, you remind what you said? It was uh, cheesy adventure. Cheese adventure and, and someone else here? <laughs> Scariness. Okay, that's more than what I was thinking, to be honest. Um, chunk number two. Be quiet, do listen, please. Let your imagination run wild. Lady there, with dark hair. Okay, young man. A, a bunch of people dressed in fancy and dancing in the courtyard. Wonderful imagination. Two doves in a pond. 
And then there's a magic crystal ball, and you can see the evil witch staring at them. So it's a fantasy type yeah. thing. Um, <laughs> now thinking also dynamics. Is it building up? Is it dying? And other ideas, thoughts you're getting? Okay, and now next chunk. I just love this. Okay. Really? No, I, I, I have to disagree with that one, but but interesting. Okay, winning a war. Winning a war. Okay, I like the winning part. Yes. Stru uh, um, yes. Speak. <laughs> End of a movie. That's, yeah, that's it. And then last chunk now, last chunk. I'll try and look in this area. Yes? L yeah, lady there? Uh, okay. Yes, you? Um, Mary uh, you? <laughs> um, people skating around on an ice pond. People skating around an ice pond. That's exactly the kind of thing I was thinking of. Yes. Uh, y young girl there? Epic adventure. adventure. Epic adventure. And the girl behind her? Okay. Yes? Two lovers reunited after a big horrible tragedy. We could go on and on, and you can all write to me if you like uh, on my Facebook page. It's great. Um, um, but here's a very interesting thing: is that we went from backstabbing, was it, in a horror movie? We went through a crystal ball in a dark night in an adventure movie to two lovers reunited and skating on a rink. That was one minute of music. Think about the journey you can be taken in a 20-piece of minute piece of music. And I'd be absolutely honest with you, and my friends will testify, I am by no means exclusively um, interested in classical music. It's my main interest, it's my passion, it's my love, but it's not my only interest. Um, I enjoy some rock music, some other kinds of music. The thing about classical music, about symphonic and operatic repertoire, is that it can take you on a very long journey. A, a pop song, rock song, tends to be in one mood throughout the song. Here, in one minute, just, just think about the different answers we had. Ponder on that. So that kind of proves, to a certain extent, the power music can have in one very small way. But here's the really important thing. Music isn't just a musical journey. Has any of you ever heard of Daniel Barenboim and his East-West, uh, um, I just said, has any of you, have any of you uh, heard of uh, Daniel Barenboim and his East-West uh, orchestra? No? Yes, one hand, two hands. Daniel Barenboim is a, is a really um, a wonderful a pianist and conductor, and he's created an orchestra in Israel, which is roughly 50% uh, Israeli, mostly Jewish uh, musicians, and roughly 50% mostly um, Palestinian Muslim uh, um, musicians. So think about this. With music, with an orchestra, a man has united two people which have been at war for a very long time and with very dire consequences. Uh, and so that is another thing that music can do. We're going to come to what it can do for you in specific in a minute, but I'll give you a few more examples. Um, Elsa Stamer, you've probably more of you have heard of Elsa Stamer. Dudamel, yes. The same sort of hands going up. Um, Elsa Stamer is Venezuela's national music program. Uh, it offers thousands and thousands of kids who live in the slums, in uh, literally in most atrocious conditions. It gives them instruments, it gives them hope. Music is an ambassador for hope, for future, for the future of you all, whether or not you're part of music. Um, and um, 
I was actually recently, or last year, in Kosovo. Kosovo is a, is a country which has just become uh, independent from Serbia. And there are many arguments as to whether I was right or not. But um, the two peoples, the Albanians and the Serbians, were fighting very badly. And I came to this orchestra um, as part of, a, I guess, a charitable project. And I thought I would be experiencing um, you know, real conflict between these two people. I saw in front of me Serbian, Macedonian, Albanian musicians come together, and, and to put that into context, that's just as bad as a conflict as the Palestinian-Israeli, if not worse, playing together and coming together for and with music. I don't know of that many other mediums which can achieve that. I'm sure there are, but I don't know of that many. Um, now, I was talking to some of my friends living in this area and uh, in, in Britain, and a lot of them tell me that, well, their parents aren't that keen for them to be uh, studying music because it's not profitable. Ooh. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to think that we all can agree that profitability is not the greatest joy in life. Sure, you want to afford to give your kids a good education, a good uh, health care home, but is there not something more important to the money? Um, music, whether or not you become a musician, I encourage every person to dwell into it, even if you absolutely are sure you want to become a banker or a very exciting, um, or, or a, a software engineer, much more exciting. Um, you know, whether or not, whatever your plans are in life, by all means, follow your dream. But let art be part of, of, of that, because it teaches you comradeship, generosity, sharing, skills very important to any, any profession. For example, uh, how many of you, hands up, who goes to the symphony here? You have a wonderful orchestra here, Seattle Symphony. Hands up, who regularly goes? Or to the opera, either, or both. OK, maybe 10%, 9%, 8% you? I'd like to see 99.999%. Um, when you come to the symphony orchestra concert, this is quite apart from enjoying things that you just heard, which I think is beautiful beyond all belief. You are people there who of every race, of every, um, well, of all two, three genders, um, of <laughs> of, I was going to say every, but then there's like there's 20, no, um, of every background, financial, so on, of every belief religiously, um, uh, and yet we're all there as one, as one brother and sisterhood, as one group, as friends to enjoy it. And again, very few, very few places where we can have that level of equality. In fact, I think music is the closest we can get to utopia um, in reality without causing the, the awful... Uh, things that communism can bring. Um, I didn't say that. Um, uh, yes, so I'd also like to add that another great thing I talked about in the beginning of my speech, that one of the great things that we are as humans is um, that we can express ourselves through many mediums. Another great thing that distinguishes us as a species is that we can learn from each other. Uh, that's why we're not still digging ants out with a stick, but we're building airplanes and, and great Microsoft computers um, and uh, and so on, um, and um, <laughs> and you know because we learn from each other. That's another very important thing you can learn. We here, most of us, you know, 99% of us here, come from a pretty privileged background. I think you know, particularly if we compare ourselves to the horrors that we saw are going on in Africa and other parts of the world earlier today. Most children, or a large proportion of children in the world don't even have the time or the security to, to think about art. Um, and yet, if art were introduced to them by those who do have that time, like El Sistema in Venezuela, the consequences can be absolutely phenomenal. So now I've talked to you about what music can do for you, taking you on a journey emotionally. Um, oh, I'd also like to add that with music, is the only, well, art is the only place you can be 100% honest. In my experience as a composer, I, I write music a lot, there are th some things that cannot be said in life. Um, things, I don't know, you want to tell someone, thing, things that you want to tell the world, or just one person, or, or whatever. It's the only place where you can do that. And so another reason to be. Now, what you can do for music, because we've heard it can bring people together which were warring. It can help children have a future and, and take them from illness and poverty into a decent life. What can you do for it? Well, some of you will become musicians probably here. I know that, that there are a lot of you here who enjoy music. But some of you obviously won't, and that's great. That's why we have a, you know, someone will become a, uh, in finance, someone will be in software, someone will be an engineer, whatever. 
Most of you will probably earn more than musicians. That's, a, that's, the, honest <laughs> that's the honest truth, financially. It's very important for those who can give one day, because now you're, of course, a little young, but one day you might be in a position to help a single artist who really needs it, who needs that someone to believe in him and you know, give him a kick in the backside and tell him to move on, but in a good way. Um, or, you know, who really needs support. There are those of you who will be able to do that. And, you know, Microsoft, of course, is a, is a great uh, um, supporter. In America, you do have this culture of supporting arts. One of the things I love so much about your country, amongst many other things. Um, and in Europe, we don't of private supporting. So treasure that. Uh, in Holland now, one quarter of the art budget is left. You can destroy an orchestra in five seconds. It takes hundreds of years, I do mean hundreds, um, to build it up. We, as young people now, can help. But here's the thing you can do absolutely tomorrow. You can go and support those people who have given their lives to helping others and sharing their passion. You can go to concerts. You can go to opera. You will enjoy it just as much as you are giving back. That is the greatest form of support, above all money, above everything, is sharing with each other as a human race, as people, sharing each other the beauty of art. Um, and I guess, I should probably move on a bit, um, I guess that that's my message to you all today, that you can help and you can be helped by art. And, Look at these examples and uh, look at these great, great things. I, as a musician, for example, I have as a conductor the job of going around everywhere every week to different places and sharing music. I can tell you I am the luckiest man, guy, boy, man, guy, uh, person uh, on earth to do this. And I hope that you all can be a part of that, whether actively or passively, but I believe you can help create a better future for yourself and for everyone around by taking part in that. So support it. Tell your schools, we want art, we want music, we want to have fun. Tell your parents, tell the world that we love humanity, we love what we have achieved, and we will take it further. Thank you.